these are these are sort of um, oh, what do you say like um, foundational statements, and and I do return to them in my videos periodically. And these are things I say to people even when they've gone through a lot of this process and they're in deeper stages of realization. I still have to remind people of this on on occasion because it is sort of foundational and it's important. And the tendencies we have to overlook these foundational elements uh, are strong and they have some momentum. So it bears reminding, but it always bears some mentioning to if, if people are not uh, familiar with what I do and what I talk about. So I'll just make a few statements and they're gonna be a, a bit um, uh, in the form of statements of contrast, okay? So I'll contrast them to some ideas people may have about what would just be called spirituality. Of course, that word is loaded. It means many things. It's become a bigger and bigger uh, uh, sort of genre and culture now, which is great, which is great. But but our preconceived notions are often very tied into our identities. So it's important to to just sort of talk about these these um, these points I'm going to make in relation to what a lot of us may consider to be that which is spiritual without having thought about certain aspects of it. Okay, so the first thing I would say about this is um, it's non-conceptual. So what that means is many of us, not everybody, people are very different, but many of us tend to be, tend to approach life and approach the world in a very intellectual way. What I mean by that is we're always making models in our mind. We're trying to look for patterns. Everybody does this to some degree. Um, we're trying to um, we're trying to fit everything new that we come into contact with into a new kind of paradigm, or I'm sorry, into our existing paradigm. We're, we're looking for where that fits in our knowledge base. Now that stuff is gr those approaches are really good, like in the workforce, in problem solving, in science, and so forth. Not so good when it comes to this. When it comes to this process. Uh, really one of the first things that we do is we start to question how much that actually, how much accuracy accuracy that approach has when it comes to identity, when it comes to living truth, when it comes to sort of reality unfiltered, we just have to really start questioning that as it applies again to this process of investigation into our own nature, the nature of reality. So, so when I say non-conceptual, it's something I remind people of all the time you know, if you're if you're getting book after book and taking note after note and memorizing stuff and just and really trying to use your own knowledge base to like force the hand of the universe to wake you up or something, you're gonna find a lot of struggle with that. It's much better to be open and questioning, and and feeling, uh, and letting the experience overtake you at times. Even while I'm talking, you may notice this. You may notice a feeling coming up through you or a feeling of of something just sort of dissolving. If that happens let it happen. It's great. That's what I'm pointing to. I'm not actually giving you information per se. So that's number one, what I would just call non-conceptual. Number two would be, um, this process is rather paradoxical. So so there will be things I say that sound like, oh, that's the way it is, right? You'll, you'll say, oh, that, that resonates with me. So Angelo's saying that's the way it is. But it's really contextual. It depends on who I'm talking to, what the circumstances of the moment are, and ultimately what the energetics are. So I may say something rather different or answer a question differently to a different person at a different time because that's what needs to be addressed. So this plugs into number one, the non-conceptual, and that is hold this stuff lightly and know that some of it will sound directly contradictory or paradoxical, and that's okay. We love paradoxes. Think of the, think of the movies we love, like The Matrix or I don't know Fight Club or movies with surprise endings, where you think you're watching one movie and all of a sudden, boom! It was not what you thought it was, but it, it makes you feel something like, oh, there's truth there. Yeah. So this this process and and where where it leads is rather paradoxical, and just be okay with that, um, because if you're if you're really too rigid with with how how things should go and have to go. It just adds struggle to this. You, you can still wake up, but it's just gonna add unnecessarily struggle. The third thing I wanna say, it kind of ties into the other two, specifically the second uh, paradox, and that is that spirituality, uh, um, I'm not sure about classically, but maybe contemporarily in the last say 100 years or something, the, so, some of the ideas in spirituality, some of the, the, the flavors of spirituality take on a, a, a sort of flavor of you know, everything's bliss, everything's peace, wholeness, 
um, light, um, empowerment, and all that's great. Uh, there is a truth to all of that. At the same time, when we talk about true awakening, when we talk about really investigating the nature of identity, I would be lying to you if I didn't say there's a, there's a, there's a shadow aspect to this that's really important to be able to navigate and be willing to navigate and have the tools to navigate. Um, it's not going to be something you can't handle. Um, it's not going to overwhelm you to the point of dysfunction, but it will be surprising to some people. It, it's surprising to many people. It's not the whole. It's not the whole process. It's not, the process isn't one of just one long dark night of the soul. But you're going to have times that are difficult. You're going to see, as I said in my my intro chapter to the book, you're going to see things about yourself you didn't know were there. Know were there. You're going to feel things you didn't know you could feel. You're going to experience emotions that you thought you never had. Um, and all of that's okay. It all ultimately integrates. Uh, but when we first come in, in, into contact with these sort of shadow spaces or, say, repressed emotions we can have a lot of resistance to them that we didn't know we had. And so to feel that resistance, it just comes right up into consciousness. So just know that some of this is uncomfortable for sure. And that's okay too. Uh, ultimately, what you realize is you have a vast bandwidth for experience. If you want to experience wholeness, if you want to experience the infinite, then you can't leave things out. It just doesn't work that way, right? Um, that you kind of have the capacity and you have the capacity to experience and process all of this. But sometimes you need some help. You know, you may need a therapist at t certain times. You may need, you know, relational work like circling, um, someone who's really good at emotion work, some authentic relating, like all of these things come into play. And there are specific techniques in the book, in the emotions chapter, in the beliefs chapter that are in your toolbox for when you come into contact with this stuff. So that's the third thing is that it's not all love and light. Um, it, that's part of it, but you'll never know the, the infinite light of, uh, you know, of, being and non-being simultaneously until you go through the dark spaces. You have to, you know, really experience all of this. And you don't even have to direct that. It will just come. But just know that it, when, it, when it comes, the fact that it's there means you actually have the capacity for it. You have the bandwidth for it. And you'll be surprised again and again at how much bandwidth you actually have. So those are the sort of orienting things I just wanted to say.